In April 2019, the Online Harms White Paper was published, proposing that all technology companies, big or small, will have a duty of care to their users, commensurate with the role those companies play in our daily lives. After a period of consultation, the government released their full response to the White Paper on the 15th of December 2020, and on the 12th of May 2021, the government released the Draft Online Safety Bill. So what does it propose to do? The Online Safety Bill establishes a new regulatory framework which encompasses plans for a system of accountability and oversight for technology companies moving beyond self-regulation and with the aim of pre preventing harm to individuals in the United Kingdom. This framework will make clear to companies their responsibilities to keep users in the UK safer online by imposing duties of care in relation to illegal content and content that is harmful to children, whilst also imposing duties on providers to protect rights to freedom of expression and privacy. Providers of user-to-user -user services, which is a broad range of businesses including social media platforms, dating apps, online marketplaces, etc., which meet specified thresholds, will have additional duties imposed, specifically in relation to content that is harmful to adults, content of democratic importance, and journalistic content. So how will it do it? And there are many different aspects within the Online Safety Bill, but the main ones are these. Firstly, a statutory duty of care. In other words, all companies in scope will have a statutory duty of care towards their, their users, requiring those companies to, pre to prevent illegal content and activity and ensure that children are not exposed to harmful content. Broadly, there are a number of duties. So illegal content risk assessments and content duties, the duty of rights to freedom of expression and privacy, the duty of reporting and redress, and record keeping and review. For services likely to be accessed by children, there are two additional duties. These are the children's risk assessments and duties to protect the online safety of children. Finally, for Category 1 services, which will be defined in secondary legislation but are likely to be the largest global platforms, we've got uh, the adult risk assessments, we've got duties to protect the online safety of adults, and duties to protect democratic content, followed by duties to protect journalistic content. And then we have the codes of practice. These will be produced by Ofcom. They are statutory codes which will outline the systems and processes that, that companies need to adopt in order to fulfil their duty of care. And then finally, we've got the independent regulator who will be accountable to Parliament. Ofcom will oversee and enforce compliance and this will be uh, funded from industry fees placed upon companies above a threshold which is based on global annual revenue and the primary duty of Ofcom will be to improve the safety of users of online services and within that duty there will be a number of functions and some of these functions will include things like setting out what companies need to do to comply. They'll establish a framework for transparency, trust and accountability, effective reporting and redress mechanisms, and commission research to improve understanding of online harms, followed by enforcement, the aim of which is to encourage compliance and positive cultural change, including civil fines up to £18 million or 10% of annual global turnover, whichever is higher, irrespective of where that company is based in the world. So what is and isn't in scope? Once produced, the legislation will set out a general definition of harmful content and activity. There will be no exhaustive or fixed list as this would prevent the ability to uh, respond quickly to new forms of online harms. The general definition will apply to content and activity where there is a reasonable foreseeable risk of significant adverse physical or psychological impact on individuals. A number of limited priority categories will be set in secondary legislation and these will cover aspects such as criminal offences including child sexual exploitation and abuse, terrorism, hate crime and sale of drugs and weapons. There will be harmful content and activity affecting children, for example pornography and violent content.
There will be content and activity that is legal when accessed by adults, but which may be harmful to them. For example, content about eating disorders, self-harm or suicide. And there are a number of aspects that are not in scope due to existing legislative or regulatory and other governmental in, uh, initiatives which are in place. And these are harms to organisations, harms resulting from breaches of intellectual property rights, and then there's harms resulting from breaches of data protection legislation. We've also got harms resulting from breaches of consumer protection law and harms resulting from cyber security breaches or hacking.